Good morning, friends. Today is Mass for April 15th. We begin with the morning offering. O most sacred heart of Jesus, through the immaculate heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, sufferings of this day, in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. I offer them for all the intentions of your sacred heart, the salvation of souls, the reparation of sin, the reunion of all Christians, and in particular for the intentions recommended by our Holy Father this month. Today's Mass is being offered in memory of Irene Herta, aunt of parishioner Carrie Callis. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one 
who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, Rejoice O hearts, hearts that, that seek, seek the, the Lord. Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, Rejoice O hearts, hearts that, that seek the, the Lord. Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. According to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And Jesus replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. But then some of, those, some of us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described but him they did not see. And Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then he began with Moses and all the prophets, 
he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we have this beautiful story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus from the Gospel of Luke. Early commentators think that it may have been a couple. So we'll assume it was Mr. and Mrs. Cleopas walking along, and along comes Jesus and asks them what they're talking about, and they start telling him all the story. And Jesus has this wonderful line here, Oh, how foolish you are. How slow of heart to believe all the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Brothers and sisters, this line is addressed to us this morning. Jesus is saying, oh, how foolish you are. We need to let go of our preconceptions our ideas to open ourselves up to the Lord's way, which is very different than ours. They come to recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. It's very significant. Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread, a sign of gathering his life together, blessed it, gave thanks for it, all that he had received from the Father, broke it as he would be broken the following night on the cross and shared it. And it was not in the gathering or the blessing, but in the breaking of the bread that they came to recognize Jesus. Because in the breaking, that's when the openness of God's power really happens. We now are in a very broken time. Certainly our regular routines, our schedules are broken, kids aren't going to school, they may not be able to go to work, Some people's livelihood is broken. They've lost their job. They have no way to pay their bills. All of our plans and schemes, everything we thought we were going to do is now up in the air and broken. First communion, pilgrimages, plan, trips, everything is up in the air. It's a time of being broken. Our ability to spend time with others, to visit people we care about, all these things are broken. But it is in the broken times that we can come to recognize the power of the Lord. That they recognized him in the breaking of the bread. And in this time when we are no longer in control, but recognize God's goodness and love for us in his son Jesus, who helps us through these difficult times that we come to really recognize the Lord. So, oh how foolish you are, Now is the time for us to stop, reflect, think, to recognize that we are not in control, but rather God is, to open our hearts to be able to recognize Jesus even in the broken times. Let us pray. Let us pray for ourselves and for all the church that we will have a greater sense of faith in Jesus and God's care for us We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are suffering from this pandemic, either directly illness or illness of those they love or loss of income or disruption of their schedules, 
we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are fighting this, the researchers, the doctors, the nurses, the ambulance drivers, all those who are fighting this virus that God will support and strengthen them, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, our city, our homes, and in our own hearts, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who have died, that they may enjoy peace and light before the face of God, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the special needs and prayers and intentions we bring with us today. For the prayers that remain silent in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you revealed your Son, Jesus, as the power over sin and over death. Hear the prayers we make in his name, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you. For the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Please pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, receive the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body through Christ our risen Lord, The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and, count and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Joe our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her beloved spouse, the Saints Peter and Paul, the Apostles, St. Augustine of Canterbury, St. Phoebe, St. Mary of Magdala, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and in you, the Holy Spirit, all glory, honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a safe day. Stay well. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.